I think those cow pokes should be getting here any minute now. Oh, I can't wait to see their excited little faces. Me too, I love Well, hey there! We didn't see you come in. My name is Connor. And my name is Thomas. And we're both going to be giving you a tour of Sealy Stables today. <sighs> Thomas, how would you feel about giving our future stable hands here a history lesson? I think that would be an excellent idea. Right now, we are sitting in the Sealy Stable Museum. It was built in 1869 by entrepreneur Albert L. Sealy. It was used as a livery stable and as a, the main staging area for Albert Sealy's stage line, which ran between Los Angeles and San Diego. Now, as we move further through the museum, you're going to get a sneak peek and a closer look at stagecoaches and other forms of transportation back to the old days. This is going to include how people from Old Town made it around town, and how visitors from out of San Diego made it into California. Are you ready to get started? Let's go. Let's. So the Sealy Stables, as a livery stable, is essentially the transportation hub of Old Town San Diego. So of course back then people would move around using horses and wagons and different methods of transportation. Of course those things are not easy to maintain. It's not like your modern car. You can't just leave a horse in the garage for three weeks and then expect it to just get up and go. So, if you didn't have the money, the resources, or the time to take care of your own horse, you would rent out a space here in the livery stable. And the livery stable would feed it, they would water it, and they would muck out the stall, which is probably the most difficult part of keeping a horse back then. But they didn't just have to maintain the horses. They also had to keep them healthy and well-groomed. And they had lots of tools for that, different brushes, and picks and clippers to maintain their coat and keep the horses healthy. Of course, they didn't just have to maintain the animals themselves, they also had to maintain the equipment that went along with them or the furniture. So the saddles, the bits, the bridles, all the different objects which are important to transporting goods or people via animals and horses and mules and different livestock. Of course, you have to keep it well maintained, not just for looks, but because you don't want this equipment failing you in the middle of a journey. Because, of course, back then, everything's very isolated. So if your bridle or your wagon or anything fails, well, no one's there to help you. So not only was maintaining the horses an important part of the livery stable, but also maintaining all of this important equipment. Now, once all those horses were taken care of in the stable, you're probably wondering, what were they going to be hauling? Well, right here is a great example of a mud wagon, a type of stagecoach used a lot during the San Diego to Los Angeles stage line that Sealy operated. Inside the wagon are actually three different rows of seats, each one that could fit three passengers inside. So that's nine people packed inside this wagon. Right there on the front of the wagon, you can fit another three passengers for a total of 12 people total. Now, you may not look at today, but this used to be the most efficient mode of transportation back in the 19th century. And that's because it actually kept moving continuously along the route, only stopping every 15 miles or so to hitch out new horses that were rested up at another livery stable. So while the mud wagon, as we saw earlier, would be an example of a more sophisticated and modern wagon by 1869 standards. What we have right here is a much older type of vehicle here in California. This is a Spanish carretas. Now, carretas is much more simple and rustic than a mud wagon. For one, these wouldn't be built back east in a large factory by skilled workers. Carretas would be built here in California itself. And of course, you can see it's a much simpler design. There's no metal components. It's made completely out of wood. The wheels sometimes wouldn't even be specifically made. They would just be parts of trees that we chopped off and essentially used as wheels. And of course, these weren't exactly the most luxurious transportation either. It was very hot. It was very slow because it was pulled not by horses or mules, but by oxen. And the wheels, if they weren't greased a lot, would actually squeak so loud that you could hear this coming from miles away. So even in 1869, they considered themselves lucky to be riding in a mud wagon or any other type of stagecoach and not in a carretas. But we're still lucky to have examples of this early type of vehicle here in Sealy Stable. Now, not only did stagecoaches carry passengers across their stage lines, but they also carried other things such as the US mail. 
Wells Fargo Company was originally contracted to deliver U.S. mail across large vasts of land going from the East Coast all the way here to the West Coast. So it wasn't uncommon for passengers to also be posted up with large bags of U.S. mail going across these journeys. And like I mentioned earlier at the mud wagon, this was the most efficient way to deliver these parcels as the stagecoach never stopped except for those stage stops every 15 miles or so. Of course, stagecoaches weren't the only vehicle here in California. They also had these massive freight wagons. Now these were very important because during the California gold rush, all these small mining towns were popping up in the mountains outside of Sacramento and they needed supplies, food, different equipment to be taken from the port cities, such as San Francisco, into the mountains. So they had hundreds of these freight wagons moving all that equipment day in and day out. Of course, these freight wagons, because of their massive size, had to be pulled by large teams up to 18 animals of either oxen or mules. Now, these freight wagons, you can kind of see them as the equivalent to the modern 18-wheeled truck, you know, going up and down the freeway. So here in Sealy Stables, you're not only going to find stagecoaches or freight cargo haulers, you're going to find things like this right here. And you can think of it as the 19th century SUV. This wasn't meant for long distance travels, but more of your everyday needs throughout San Diego County. In fact, we can see the last people to use this were looking like they were getting ready for a picnic of some sort. This is a Studebaker wagon. Now this is essentially your 19th century pickup truck used by farmers and different workmen to haul goods anywhere they please. But what's important about the Studebaker is partially its name. You probably recognize the name Studebaker from not their wagon manufacturing, but their car manufacturing because the Studebaker company actually did manufacture wagons before eventually transitioning into automotive vehicles. Another interesting point about the Studebaker wagon is that some of the inventions that were later used on cars were first seen on wagons. For example, suspension, as you see there up on the seat, and the brake, or specifically this here is a parking brake, which was new to wagons and then later was used on the very first cars and automobiles. Well, Thomas, looks like we got ourselves a telegram. Oh, what's it say? It says that these stable hands are just about ready to go on to the next stop on their tour. Oh, well, I hate to see them go, but we've had a good time teaching them and showing them the Sealy Stable. That's right, we were happy to have you here. 